Uh. We make it major moves. We make it major. Where the wrong gonna be? Yep. Paradise City just hop on it. We make it major. What's going on, y'all? You are now tuned into the More Than Luck podcast. I'm Fine Wine. My name is Dan. My name is Dan. <laughs> we, cause we remember we went switch to Dan after the one you had said. So I was just like, man, you gotta leave all that in, guy. We gotta just get to it. <laughs> right, let's get to it. We gotta figure that out another day. And today we got my man uh, Demetrius, aka DCR, aka Paradise City. Yeah. Uh, Two twenty seven zone. For sure. It's an honor to be here, man. I appreciate the invite, my brothers. For sure, for sure. Okay, yeah, for sure, for sure. So how's your day going today, man? My day going cool, man. I'm, I'm chilling right now. I'm off for the holiday season. Mm-hmm. So I'm just getting ready for the holidays. And that's it, man. What about y'all? I'm in the same boat, man. You know what I'm saying? I'm off till third. <laughs> off till third. Good for you to break. Well, I'm not off. <laughs> I'm still, I'm you not off. Go, what y'all going to do? Ain't no kids coming. Right. I mean, I'm just going to, I guess, just take care of work. You what do mean? Um, wait, 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 wait till I get the facts. Wait till I get it. You know what I'm saying? Can you break the song? <laughs> so Jake just chill. <laughs> Jake just chill. Jake is just chill. Jake is just chill. Jake is just I'm here. I'm, I'm only here so I don't get fine. Fresh, fresh, fresh. Fresh. Let's talk about holiday pay. I don't get that. <laughs> cool. It's cool. 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 So, It is what it is. It is what it is. You gotta get what you gotta get. It's Larry, baby. <laughs> <laughs> It just is what it is. For we ain't got to worry about it. For sure. So, you know what I'm saying? We've been knowing you for how long, man? Man, eight, nine years. And easy. Easy. Easy eight, nine. You know what I'm saying? I feel like today we should go ahead and kind of pop one. Oh, uh, man, what y'all want to do, What's man? That? That's a long time. So, I feel like we're going to go with Martel first. We're going to go with Martel first. We're going to go with Martel first. We're going to go with Martel Because, like, shit, it ain't like, like don't, don't say nothing to me. It's yeah. the end. You know what I'm saying? Don't say nothing to me, but to say it, man. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm I, really I ain't going to even fight on that. I'm real you know east side, man. So, I, I, brought the, I brought the Martel. These some, let's talk about these big ass cups, though. Hey, man. you know, we we not sponsored by Bacardi, but okay. you, uh, these are cups we had in the house. I'm going to let you do your own thing with it because I have no idea. I mean, just. I mean, you. Little, I mean, it just, it's pretty much just getting the taste, cause I, you ain't gonna be able to measure this joint. Nah, nah, you're not, you're not. You know what I'm saying? So, but we've been knowing you for you said eight nine. Going Easy on, eight nine. Yeah nine. Cause I met you in 2010. 2010. Coming over here. I'm smooth. 2011. 2011. That's a fact. Yeah, man. And so man, I met you, man. Look, quick story, right? So I'm transferring from Webster. Yeah. Right. And. Man, I ain't doing what I'm supposed to do. I'm supposed to bend, look at the college business, look when I can come in, when the lab, what time they close. Yeah. Now I'm just going straight to, you know what I'm saying? I think me and my mom went to the mall before that, or we did some other stuff. You know what I'm yeah, saying? And I'm like, hey, you gotta understand. Like, well, you know, we ain't from here. So you know. Right, right. So yeah. Hey, so Decatur where it's great. Decatur where it's great, but you got They got the mall, sir. You got the malls here. The malls are here. You feel me? You got one mall, but we gave it to Foresight. It was a lot different from when I was a kid. Okay. Whatever. <laughs> So Demetrius was walking out, you feel yeah. me? And so I was at work. He was at work. Tour guide. Tour guide. I was about to say. So then I, I hollered at him. Okay. I was like, "Hey man, this uncle, you know what I'm saying? Blah blah blah. I forgot what I asked. Basically, then he ended up showing us where we get toward the Miss Yo. Got a little Miss Yo. You feel me? God bless. The real one. Big Libra. Yeah. Hey, I gotta holler before I go. You feel me? She was like, "Hey Demetrius, can you get him a tour? Demetrius, the key thing, Demetrius getting off work." So you know already, you know. So my At thing, that point, know, it was God given. Nah, for real, it was God given. Yeah, so he gave us a tour on both campuses. Oh, he did. Yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. Because I knew it. I saw his demeanor. He looked like he was going to know where people lived at. So where the parties was going to <laughs> So I had to sell it to him. I had to show him, like, bro, this is where you can be. It's where you can be. It That's goes there. That's a fact. So then, yeah. after and oh, oh, and oh, oh, and match oh, and, 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 and meadows. Ooh, you know what I'm saying? All three. All three. You feel me? All three. And everything is around me. 100%. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So we, he gave us a tour. You know what I'm saying? We was like, hey, you know what I'm saying? I was like, I appreciate it. We ain't talk for the rest of the summer. All right. But then I seen him again. It was all up. Yeah, yeah. That's sure. my nigga. For you sure. Yeah, I don't remember, like, I don't remember the dates on that, the time frame. Oh, yeah. But I do remember, like, it was like the next semester or the next school year or something like that. But Jay was already, he had already met everybody, you know what I'm saying? He was already, already settled in. He was already settled in. He was doing his own thing on his own trail. But then that second semester is when we all 
moved into one of dorms, That's 227. Cause I was one of four know that. Yeah, he was, uh, he was on a whole different floor. Mm -hmm. One of four seats, then I moved up to 227 seats. So space yeah. was already there for him. It was right Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he, he cut my hair a couple times on one of four seats. <laughs> okay. But yeah. then he definitely cut my hair one time, you know what I'm saying? Most memorable time at 227. Woo. So, Bang. yeah, yeah, yeah. Bang. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was the day I, you know what I'm saying, crossed into Alpha, you feel me? You know what I'm saying? So I had to get ready for a really, really special presentation. You know what I'm saying? And my man was that for me. You feel me? The most memorable time. We had some times in that, bro. We did. Jay almost burnt up in that moment. I you know, almost man? died. Like died. Like refrigerator caught on fire. Too. Yeah. And I'm yelling. You know what I'm saying? Nigga, come save me. To <laughs> he swapped. Wait, 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 he what? swapped though. He can't move. He oh, I'm yelling. Like, I just passed out the night before. Okay. Um, okay. In, in the in the line in the room down there, we got drunk. This is for locals was like. Oh. Oh. If you over a certain age, there's certain people under a certain age you still don't understand yet, yeah, because I ain't lived through it. Yeah. But for loco, yeah. Yeah. take your soul out. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's, yeah. That's, 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 that's 227 for you. And I was lost. You feel me? So, you know, and then after that, we just started doing music. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I moved into a mansion where you were already staying. Yeah. And then he came back as soon as I had a Mac. And shit, it, it, it gets just like peanut butter and jelly, it mesh. Yeah. And then, uh, you know what I'm saying? So, what are you doing now? So right now, uh, kind of picking up where you left off at, when when you moved into the apartment, I promise it was like you was the missing piece and, and what I wanted, been wanting to do for years, mm -hmm. which is make and compose music, you know what I'm saying? Write, record, you know what I mean? It's, it's something I love to do. So that's where I'm at right now, honestly. I just dropped a project, which I've been working on for a minute, probably since we moved out the apartment in 2016, I've been working on it. You've been touring? I've been, I, I, in a way, I, I done lived here and there, you know what I'm saying? Let me take a shot for that. I was saying it's time for that? It's time for the shot. Cause this is the Martell, G. you know how we do it, man. Yeah, right. so, right. Salute, right. salute, right. salute, right. salute, right. salute. Right. salute. Hey, when you gonna party, come party with me. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> mm. mm. Shout out to Lori and the Drink Channel. Oh, man. Man. man, man, super influential game, man. What? That's where I'm at, bro. Like, uh, I'm, I'm releasing music, man. Yeah. Um, I just dropped a project last month, as y'all know. Yes, yes, yes. So, so, the, so moving into the new year, the goal is just to make a couple more videos from that project, really step up the promotion, mm -hmm. uh, and then start working on that that next project, which okay. is gonna be more like a compilation. So working with multiple producers and artists that I build relationships with. Same concept as Revolutionary Dreams, as you know, that's where we got our started. Uh, got our start at. And, uh, so you know, revolutionary dreams too has always been the next step after my my, my solo right. EP. So we get a lot of great feedback, and I'm in a position right now like where, like shit, this is what it's looking like my full time thing is gonna be mm -hmm. figuring out this music thing. Honestly, so like, as a, either as a production manager or start my own business with it, yeah. or just full time artistry or just full time working on these projects. Like it's really so, writing down. So you know, the line essentially your gift and your passion at this point. At this point, bro, and, and now you're trying to figure out how to how to earn an income, you know, a steady income, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, doing it. That's right. exactly where I'm at. Yeah. So how are you doing? You know what I'm saying? What are your steps of, of how, like, I, I know you, because you, I, you had what, the, the blue Honda? Uh, oh, it, it, was a, it was a Camry though. Camry. Camry. Same family though, same family. And you had the, it on a USB, you plugged it in one morning, you see me walking to school. Yeah, yeah. And you and it was the old Demetrius, I think it was oh, like. Oh man, <laughs> yeah, yeah, nah, for years though. Yeah. For years, so like where I'm at right now, bro, is one thing 2019, 2018, and 2019 taught me is that I don't have to do it by myself. Yeah. So I got a solid core team, you know what I'm saying? Shout out to my boy Chino, right around beats. Uh, shout out, you know, I made JDA Keys and STL. Here's what they did for my project. But that's gonna be the uh, formula moving forward. Okay. It's not feeling like I gotta make all the beats and I gotta mm -hmm. make all the songs and it gotta be just me and my sound and that's it. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm a lot more open to my vision and flexible with my plans. So that's first thing is just understanding how to compose, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying, and, and make the music. And then the next part is, is taking advantage of the same little scene. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I've just been kind of sitting back. I fly on the wall in some of these places, but, Soaking up stuff. but like Soaking. underground St. Louis is really starting to embrace and support each other a little bit more. You know what I'm saying? That's true. So really trying to just build up, you know what I'm saying? My name in St. Louis, and and then from there just take it step by step. I told you my revolutionary dreams too. Um, so yeah, that 
Bro, also, I'm gonna be the I'm gonna be the money man too, bro. So I got to figure out how to fund a lot of these projects that I want to do. So it's really all about just sitting down and uh, sitting down and just making the music first of all, mm-hmm. and then just kind of writing and being strategic about my plan. Also being flexible with my plans too, but real stubborn about my goals. Being yeah. being stubborn about my what goals, but flexible. Mm-hmm. So shout out to my boy Focus, mm-hmm. right? When he say be stubborn about your goals and be flexible with your plans, it's mm-hmm. like. You know, I, I know I want to. I, I know I want to be in a certain place. It may not happen in a certain time frame, or I may not get the exact opportunity I was looking for. Mm-hmm. But I know that I'm dead set on this goal happening. But I'm gonna be flexible with how God, you know, what I'm saying, allowed to happen in my life. You know. So what I'm earlier in your years, you felt like you were stubborn in both. I feel like I was stubborn, but I don't feel like I was necessarily flexible. I feel like I had in my mind um, that it was gonna be made up, and I wanted it a certain way. And if it didn't happen that certain way, then I damn near just didn't do it at all. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, as I look back, you talk about when you moved in the mansion. That's just how it's been happening. It's like, man, the goals have happened, but they didn't happen how I envisioned them happening. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I realized I had to be, uh, I, had, I had to stop focusing on trying to uh, make things happen for myself. You know what I mean? I had to stop being so focused on having things figured out. Right. Right. I had to right. allow opportunity for, for flexibility, bro, and growth, bro. What'd you say, let God be God? Let, let God, God be God. That's what I've been doing. <laughs> let say. God yeah, be that God, just sums it up. So what has your experience been like since, you know what I'm saying, starting from, I guess, let's, let's just talk from the last, you know, 2015. 2015, my yeah. experience with the music, with like the just, life. Well, just, because it's, it's more than just with music. Yeah. Like, it's, yeah. everything we do is more than just a brand. Yeah. Right. So what has your experience been like? You know, I've seen you perform in a few you know, a few places. Yeah, my experience in 2015 has been like, like I said, man, I always saw myself being a performer and being an artist, but I never knew what that was gonna look like, you know what I'm saying? So I went through some, you know what I'm saying, some bad relationship breakups. I went through some, some broke ass times, yeah. you know what I mean? So I, I went through some, I bought a computer and it stopped working on me. So really, at some points I ain't had the tools or the motivation to even create, you know? Uh, so a big part of my inspiration and creativity has been watching other artists around me. So, you know, starting in 2015 is when I really got hooked on a chance and really started seeing Wiz Khalifa live, things like that, you know what I'm saying? It really opened my mind up to creativity and, and performing, you know? And um, and I was just talking to my partner about it like this. Like I said like this, 2019 has taught me that I gotta be a lot more comfortable and confident in who I am, you know what I'm saying? All my experiences, my entire life, you know what I'm saying, it's made me who I am. And it's so easy to kind of want to be or try to do something different because of what you think success look like. Mm -hmm. But I've been having to learn how to be more comfortable and confident in myself, man. And um, I'm gonna shout out anybody, anybody come to mind, I gotta shout out Draco, you know what I'm saying? Because I went to go see him and Strings perform. And those are two artists there with their projects. I feel like they have become a lot more comfortable and confident in who they are. And like, you, you can't worry about the whole world you just gotta worry about the people that are inspired by your craft, you know what I'm saying? And inspired by your story. So shit, that's what my experience has taught me, big bro. That's what it is, you feel me? I feel that. I definitely feel that. So what would need to get in there? I would say uh, support, you know what I'm saying? Being around or, you know, growing up, moving away from where we're from, mm-hmm. places we've been our entire life, and building new relationships with people that are like-minded. That right. was definitely needed. Uh, at the same time, you know, meeting people that Whose aspirations were higher? Break real quick. What's up? What was like when you go when you said meeting you know, like you know, pop this oh, you know, yeah. What did you mean by meeting like-minded individuals? Because but it also it's hard to get there sometimes, right? Because you because look sometimes you get lonely, okay. sometimes you feel like you want to fit in, you're not able to do this because you don't right. have this type of person or you don't have right. this type of access. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. What do you what? Go ahead, and explain. That. So like-minded individuals mean like 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 me and you, right? Like where we from in small cities, it might be a little violent, you know what I'm saying? Education might be a little poor, economics might be a little low, but we got higher aspirations. Right. Neither one of us moved to St. Louis just to stay in St. Louis. We meet people every day in St. Louis that this, they ready, they already ready to move, you know what I'm saying? Yep. So it's like every day. So like for us, it was about taking advantage of this opportunity in front of us, you know what I'm saying? Like St. Louis was big. You feel me? So to meet somebody like you, or to meet somebody like Isaac, yeah. who, you know what I'm saying, had a bigger vision for himself, who had big brothers, who had parents that, you know what I'm saying, really invested into his ideology growing up, people like Dan, like that's important because y'all gonna go through some of the same challenges. Right. 
And we lived in some of the same spaces, literally. You feel All me? the time. Yeah. So it's like, man, like that's a very important. But at the same token, it's important to meet people that's doing a little bit better than you too. Yeah. That's like two, three steps ahead of life. That's necessary. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's, that's your that's peers or that's older than you. You know what I'm saying? It's like, bro, you can't be too proud to, to learn. To, yeah. So in some music. There it is. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh man. They know the process. Well, you taking another shot real quick? We gonna do another? Let's do this another shot real yeah. quick, man. I almost I, did it. I, I, hey. Salute. Shout out drink chat, baby. But you know what? What I realized because most of us, I see when we hang out with people who are old, way older than us. As the younger, as you know, as we're growing up through our adolescence, teenage, we feel like we know it all. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, and sometimes we feel like we, you know, what I'm saying we can't be told anything until, but some, you still have to fall on the ground. Yeah, yeah. You feel me? Life gonna humble you, bro. If if you don't want to be humble, life definitely gonna humble you. Cause it's got its own plan. And I say that in my track, bro. Waves. You know what I'm saying? I'm glad that my parents helped make, make me a humble individual. But even still, with that man, life is definitely. Humble, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah. Um, what do you think was it needed? Uh, a lot of the fit, man. You know what I'm saying? A lot of trying to fit in. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I don't feel like I did a lot of it, but I do remember like I can just see myself doing certain things or spending certain money because I felt like I wanted to just have certain experiences, like yeah. like buying, you know what I'm saying, Jordans every other week. Okay. You know what I'm saying? True. For right. like so. And you felt that was a fit in for you? For me. Okay. Because it, okay. you know what I'm okay. saying? That wasn't a culture that I came up in. It was more so like when I was around, like I had my, my brother or my best friend. That was their lifestyle. Okay. You know what I'm saying? That ain't really what I, I can wear Chucks every day. Like, you know what I'm saying? I can wear the same You're black and brown dress shoes. I mean, I'm a step with up, bro. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm just. But I'm, 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 but some corn is going to hurt. And pinky toes. I'm immune to it, bro. I don't even worry about that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because you know, I think what me and Jay talked about. For is like kind of like the difference between code switching and politicking. Mm-hmm. Okay. The other day. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And so like at certain points in times, like it's one thing to stick to your guns and right. be stubborn and be like, this is me, period. And then it's another thing to be like in a certain space and not know how to adapt. That's what. Right. You know what I mean? You make a lot of sense. You know? So so. Do you feel like in that instance you was like you like okay that just genuinely wasn't me? So it wasn't it wasn't me. It was just that you know what I mean I love it. I see what you said. Uh, all right. All right. That's a cultural thing though. Like with the culture, that's different. When you talk about code switching and politics and networking, I feel like those are different conversations. Like with the culture, you know what I'm saying? Like I don't feel like I needed to wear Jordans to get ahead in life. You know what I'm saying? Okay. I like Jordans. You know I couldn't afford to buy them. That was my problem. You know what I'm saying? And it wasn't like I was like some snazzy dresser where I just had to have the fly and shit to, right. you know what I'm saying? Right. But I was just doing it because like I felt like these were the coolest shoes. I wanted to have the coolest shoes because that was just important to me for whatever reason during that period of time in my life. Now you talk about code switching, politicking, that's a whole different thing. That's going to work, that's surviving, you know what I'm saying, and earning income. Well, and so for some people, they'll feel like that's part of survival. 100%. Yeah. You know what I mean? It what is. Bro, I want to be. A, I want to be a legend. Definition. Definition of a legend. Um, in my eyes, people that are legendary, they they live up to the bar and exceed the bar. You know what I'm saying? It's like, you know, I feel like there are certain expectations of a king or certain expectations of okay. a superstar. Okay. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, any degree. Any degree. Any degree. You gotta be able to do this. You, you should be able to Because you know this new generation, they make their own rules now. They do, man. Which is which is cool. I mean, it's it's only fair to them. But if you if you get one knockout, that means you the best fighter ever. I mean, you know? I don't yeah, I mean In this generation. They had they do have that confidence. And that's listen, what they got is the don't give a shit factor. Okay. Yeah, they definitely have so like they they just a lot more riskier to so they benefit so they, it's to, to so some they benefit. Of they benefit and to some of they now benefit. a lot of us don't like it because it's, it it did it, 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 it displays a certain level of disrespect I feel mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying to the people that came before you yeah. you know what I'm saying the people that had to you know what I'm saying innovate you know what I mean before you Thanks. but at the same time it's like man I, I love the new niggas you know what I mean I I I, I don't have to 
be fully immersed into their culture. Right. They and, know, you know what I'm saying? They know some things we wish we were doing. Period. And, and you, you, can't, do, and you can't hate on that. That's mm-hmm. Like, I love Roddy Rich. You feel me? Yeah. Like, the way he talks about I ain't listened to his album yet. I ain't either, but I know that some of his singles are high. Yeah, nah, I'm t- the ball and shit is my shit. Yeah. That's my shit. That's my down low is my shit too. I heard that shit in the strip club. I ain't never heard it before. That's why I ain't heard it. Bro, that shit went... We was about to leave. I said, I gotta listen to one more song after this. That's one of his EPs, huh? No, that's just oh, one of his songs. One of his Yeah. And I'm like, who is this? Right. And I just, like, before that, I just got put on right. And then shit, I'm just like, shout well. Shout out to Splat. Facts. Shout out to Splat. Shout out to Splat. Shout out to Whole 227. And the best. You feel me? And the best friends. We can't even lie. Because that's where we all came from. That's where it started from. Pressure. You feel me? That jam. So talk about where you're from, you know what I'm saying? Like, where do you see you on the radio? Yeah. So if anybody know me, they know I'm from the east side. But to be very specific, I'm from Allenton, Illinois. So Allenton is this uh, small village. It's really right on the outskirts of East St. Louis. So like East St. Louis is, as y'all know, 89 blocks, the LeBron documentary. Mm-hmm. It's really 89 blocks straight up and down through. You're like you almost miss it. Right out, right out yeah. from St. Louis, right before Belleville. But right on the outskirts of the town, like literally, uh, Allerton, it's just a little small village between East St. Louis, Centerville, and Belleville. Yeah. So, uh, for the most part, uh, it's a lot of trailers, or small houses that was built independently. You know what I'm saying? By, you know, like my grandfather mm-hmm. literally built the house that I grew up in. Him and his nephews built that. My dad was maybe seven years old when they broke ground for that. Mm-hmm. Um, and then he went down the street on tw- off 27th and Vine. Okay. You know what I'm saying? That's that's like 13 blocks south of where I was uh, where I'm from. That's East St. Louis and built the second house. So that's where I'm at, man. Like for real, I'm right there, right in the city, like on the outskirts type dude. Okay. That's what I see all the time. So what you want your music to do? What I want my music to do? Like what's the impact of it? Well, I look at my music as not only a hobby but as a business, you know. Um, so ideally. The music can take over for my income. So let's say if I'm making forty, fifty thousand right now in my current job every year, I'm gonna be making it doing music. like composing music, performing music, selling music, creating shows. You know what I'm saying? And figuring out what that is. And that's what I want my music to do. I want my I want my music, my artistry, my lyrics, my words to tell my story and to inspire people that you know what I'm saying that that, that fuck with that. You know? Mm-hmm. I want, I want my music to be a representation of either where I'm at or where I'm headed, you know what I mean? I wanted to speak for me, you know what I'm saying? So. What has it done so far that you think? So far, what it's done is, is, is A, it's brought me together, helped me build relationships with some really incredible and um, inspirational people. Uh, it has inspired me to continue to go deeper into it, you know what I'm saying? Because it's one thing from being at your mom's house, listening to Kanye, and outcast albums in the mirror, you know yeah. what I'm saying, thinking that you that to being on the stage with Two Hill. Or, you know what I'm saying? Performing with your band. You know what I'm saying? That's a whole different vibe. Multiple times. Or being at Pops on the east side playing keys with Bates. Mm-hmm. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So it's like or, or or to meet other artists that have international aspirations. Like, you know, when I went to when you moved in at Mansion, I was in Germany. 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 You feel me? Exactly. And that's where I was really getting that inspiration. Cause I was meeting people that was really feeding into their dreams. So I came back on fire. The dude from Venezuela, right? Dude from Venezuela, you feel me? My brothers, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Like they was out there doing Don't it. Don't give him a shout out. Man, shout out to Eddie Santos, man. Shout out to my boy Yosef. Shout out to Rafael, you know what I'm saying? They from Venezuela, but they're living in Europe right now, man. So I, I got a big up, got a big up them. Cause they legends in my eyes. You feel me? They left Venezuela together to keep their band together, to go to Germany. Cause one of their brothers was studying out there. And you know what I'm saying? And the rest is history. You know what I'm saying? And it was the same time I was out there for that little 30 days I was out there. Mm-hmm. I went back out there a second time. We linked up in Amsterdam. It's just legendary. I, you I can't, you got to throw it in there. You came back out in a whole other situation. Nah, that's, that's real though. That's life though. I mean, that, so that essentially was your point of saying that, like, you really got to be able to move for your dream. Yeah, I just felt like I just felt like it was just so much more diverse over there, and I feel like the music that I want to make is that type of music that can that can dominate in St. Louis, but make it over in Germany too. You know what I'm saying? Like if you fuck with the right crowd, if you're on the right scene, 
So that's what my music did. Music has opened up my eyes, man. You yeah. feel me? We, we've done some, I mean, we've done some things, and you've done some things like, you know, you've been had the chance to open Virginia one. We did. Bill Harper. We did. You know. Joe uh, Mathis. Je- Jesse Jackson. Come through with it. And it's mm-hmm. like, what, what we've been able Shout to do. Shout out to G-Baby. You know what I'm saying? My LB guitar, yeah, that ain't used to. What we've been able to do just with music alone is to inspire people all the time. But just because you have the inspiration, you know what I'm saying? A lot of people say, well, you know, like having the inspiration, they want to do something. Like these are conversations you have out all the time when you see people. What's going on, man? What you up to? I wish I could be doing what you're doing. You can. You no, can. no, 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 no. For you real, no. Because it's like this, like this is the American dream. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, and shout out to G Baby again because like G Baby gave us that opportunity Club. to open up for Jesse Jackson yeah. and Judge Mathis. Yeah. And that was back in 2014. That was our best time. That, that was, was that was in 2014, bro. Yeah. I'm talking about and, and to this day, Cathario is still on my ass. Like, bro, if you don't drop something, you full of shit. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. He's and, like, and you drop. Man, I mean, yeah, it took me a while. You know what I mean? When I dropped the guitar, it was like about damn time. <laughs> it was like, you, you know, said like LeBron went and shit. It's about damn time. Yeah, yeah, but it, it's but about <laughs> damn time. But you, when you think about it, it's like when people say, "I wish I could," it's like, why, why can't you? Like what is your barrier? You feel me? Like we're working where we've worked before. You learn you learn about barriers. So what are your barriers and not let allowing you to do what you want to do? Or to, what is stopping you? Because you're lazy? You say you have a lack of motivation, but that lack of motivation is self-love because you don't have the confidence. Yeah. To do that. And when you always tell me you're the most I'm the most confident person you ever know. That's I tell you that often. And it's like, for me, I feel like I'm held to a different standard and I'm saying that now. So when I say something, it's almost bond. Well, my word is bond already. Right. But when you say it to other people, it's like they expect that. Yep. And now you have to perform yep. every single time. Yeah. You are you always on the stage, you dancing, jumping the job. Yeah, literally, bro. And it's like a lot of people don't want to sell out. And you know what I'm saying? They don't want to stretch. They don't want to get outside that comfort zone. They don't want to stick to their word. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Make themselves do nothing like that, bro. So that I feel like that's just kind of like, I feel like that's just like the despair of life, you know what I'm saying? Ooh, it's just like it, it, it just like it caught in the middle, bro. And I want to kick it and have a good time, yeah. but I want more, you know what I'm saying? But I, I feel like success is, or I feel like the, the secret is, or the missing ingredient is, yeah, please, is how much you are willing to sacrifice. That's it. Man, how how that, much are you willing to give up? You know what I'm saying? Right there. Because like, right like there. so when I talk about my situation, one right. of the things that hold me back. Is like credit card debt, consumer talk, debt. Talk your shit. Because like for me, a lot of it is like I want it right now. Mm-hmm. Which is you know so when we were talking about that that situation earlier, you know what I'm saying? However we phrased it earlier, like that's just one of the times where I feel like I was just trying to do something. And it might not to talk about be, the Jays. Yeah, talking about the Jays. It, it may not have been to impress other people. It might have just been to satisfy myself. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. you can do it. Because I could do it, but then the but then I, it, it, know, it put a strain on me. It, 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 it put a strain on me. So it's like, like, like you I'm, said, I'm still. What are you willing to sacrifice? Like, bro, I went, to, I went to DC, bro. Uh, you remember I went to DC in the August, early September for Ade wedding. Yes. I'm out there with the bros. We had the whole. Then I had the whole out. Nigerian shit yeah. thing on, bro. Like we doing our thing out there. It was a must. Though. Nigga, I'm still paying for that trip. You know what I'm saying? We about to go into 2020. You yeah. see what I'm saying? <laughs> Because like, you know what I'm saying, when you, when you take into account, you know, flight, mm-hmm. when you take into account the hotel we want to live in, when you take into account that I'm gonna be spending okay. a hundred dollars a day in that motherfucker. Two shirts, right? Like we bought maybe like six bottles of Henny, you know what I'm saying? I done bought a pair of forces out here, I done spent a hundred dollars at the dispensary, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, bro, we turned up. We turned up, yeah. We turned up. And then we was in the bars club. I can feel that. I can feel that. Because like niggas know we had a great time yeah. in DC. Like now we older and we we plan a lot more yeah right we yeah, plan that's, a lot that's more. a secret and even then learning budgeting is like learning where your extra is yeah okay so like hey this is our extra ain't no like, extra right now me and Jay, when we be planning these trips i'd be like we'd be like all right look dude, we got this done flight done cool Airbnb. What are what are the necessities and what are the stuff we can <laughs> we can we be like yeah. hey, we optional. Okay, it's okay. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Cause what can we leave out? For real, for real. You know what I mean? And planning that and then always one man. What's crucial also is traveling. Is traveling with the right people. Yes, you got to bro. Traveling yes. with the right people. Everybody want to go, but you can't. Even even in success, everybody want to go, but you can't take everybody. Can't take everybody. Because you dragging too much. 
what I'm saying? You, and when you're trying to get up there yourself, what I've learned from 2016 to now, you got to take yourself. And as soon as you can, as soon as you make it, that's when you can pull people up. That's it. But on the way, if they're not supporting you the way you need to, you can't dwell in that because it's going to pull you down. It's going to mess up yourself, self-love, yeah. yeah. because you're going to be worried about other things, not yourself. Like when we, when you came back from London and we decided this is what we're going to do in yeah. 45 days. Oh, man. Changed yeah, yeah, my yeah. life. Now, living here, period, changed my life, changed bro. Changed my life. Because you were delivering on so much when you was talking about that. That's one thing I wanted to say. But I, I wanted to say something else, too, bro. But I forgot what that was this time. Bro. Yeah. Like those 45 days, like when I was, before I even had a job that when we worked again together. Yeah. I was a security guard at Frontenac. Oh, yeah. So every day. Nice. The, worst, the worst job I could ever had, 3 to 11, I knew I could make that in a week. Or a day. What I was going to make, right? Yeah. And so in that whole time, I'm like, I know this is not where I'm supposed to be. Yeah. You feel me? So I'm going to write down stuff, you know what I'm saying? Whatever thought, I, I got old at that point in time. I'm listening to radio just to, you know what I'm saying, get some type of conversation back. Yeah. Or some type, of, I'm looking at YouTube all day, just listen to podcasts or whatever all day just to have some type of conversation. So I just started writing down the things I really wanted to do. So then I got my job opportunity. And so after that, I, I, jobbed, I basically job shadowed for my position and then I made it my own. But in the time, I, we ran into Eric Thomas. Mm -hmm. Talking about time, you're 24. Yo, 24. Everybody got the same 24. Beyonce does a lot in her 24. And you telling me at this level, I can't give at least 16 hours worth of work and, you know what I'm saying, some more work. So mm -hmm. I'm just like, you know what? This is what I want to do. So after January came, I got the job. February came, I played that. Yeah. Literally. It was just like that, bro. And like, and you caught me about flavors when yeah. I was in Georgia still. Yeah. This was maybe like, like low key, you was about to quit. You know what I'm saying? You, you went from I'm about to quit to I want to do my own show. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I, and I think I want to do it on 227. Oh God. I think I want to call it flavors. Yeah. And it was just like that. Period. You know period. what I'm saying? Let me stepping out. Let me put out. Let me make an announcement. Let me just make an announcement so I can put it in the atmosphere and make it. It was, it was no flyer, it was no venue, it was no nothing. No nothing. We I had know, a red background with flavors. And we just yeah. living, it wasn't even, we it just wasn't living. It wasn't even. It was there. We just living. It was there. Wow. It was there. Man, that's crazy, bro. Yeah. That's crazy, bro. See. But like, but that's kind of like, you know, talking about that period, early 2018. Like, one thing for me is that, because you was talking about energy too, mm -hmm. and how everybody can't go. One thing I had to decide, one thing I had to learn is that, I can't be calling, even texting motherfuckers all the time Ooh, if they're not, yeah, if they yeah, not yeah. reciprocating that same energy. Mm -hmm. If they're not genuinely interested in my well-being, because it's like, bro, okay. like that's what make you my friend. Yeah, I, feel facts. Like, I feel like that's what make you my friend is that you think about me, and when you think about me, you act on that thought, and you reach out to me, you send a prayer up for me, no. you know what I'm saying? Right. Anything like that, because if you don't do that genuinely, I feel that when we around each other. And you know, I got a lot of love. I just text a motherfucker out the blue for you. You know what I'm saying? For no reason. But I made up in my mind, like I made a commitment to myself. I'm not doing that with nobody that's not reciprocating the energy. Unless, you know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? I feel like God put it on my heart, you know? Unless it's like, I'm just like, just like my, I text you the other day. Like my mama ran me, was like, yo, how's Big Dan? I've been facts. thinking about him. Facts. You know what I'm saying? I said, I'm like, keep I'm, praying. I'm gonna do shit. <laughs> well, I'm like, yeah. I'm God. Cause I, like, yeah, I was like, well, I don't know what this is. Because like, yeah, cause like, shit. I hadn't even thought to tell her that you was, you know what I'm saying? Because I didn't know until we was just out of a choice. I genuinely didn't know. So as soon as she said that, I'm like, well, that's, yeah. But, but, that's, but that's the reason why if God put it on my heart. I'm yeah, going to is. I'm going to act on it and just reach out and show some love. You know what I'm saying? Well, I'm gonna try to anyway. I ain't perfect, dude, but you know. Yeah, yeah we all got lives. For sure, bro. And so you just gotta make. I, I, bro, I was going through my phone today because I'm sending out my website to a lot of people. Yeah. And then I ran past a certain guy's name. I ain't gonna just name drop. No, you gotta protect the innocent. Yeah. You gotta and I'm just like, I got the number, and I got a lot of the celebrity numbers too, mm -hmm. but I haven't dropped it to him. You know what I'm saying? That's just like you, when you have certain situations, you gotta keep main, you gotta maintain though. No, that's true. No, for real. So like, what they say when when you get a business opportunity and someone says like, hey, reach out. Mm -hmm. Genuinely, those people be really waiting for you, you to reach, reach out. out. <laughs> for real. Like, and if you don't reach out within a certain period of time, they, they will forget you. They will forget you. They will forget you. 
I was telling Ashley Roberts that, you know what I'm saying? Because like she really taught me about networking. Mm -hmm. When she took me to Baltimore, right after I graduated with my bachelor's in 2013, she took me to Baltimore in 2014, introduced me to all her colleagues. And like, they even hit her up, was like, yo, we was really looking forward to mentoring your mentee, but he just never hit us up. Yeah. So it was like, I just always took that lesson with me moving forward. And like the job that I just got, that I just got let go from, like I, that's what I, that's how I got it. Because yeah. I was always just reaching out to do. Like whenever I dropped that that live project we did, I sent that to him, man. You know what I'm saying? Like all that, you that feel? Me? Yeah, all that, bro. Yeah, I, I was just one of the little slight flex. So shout out to y'all, y'all John for that. Yeah, yeah, the wind down experience. The wind down experience, yeah. man. You feel, my friend. Hey, so what gets you going, bro? What gets me going? Yeah. Uh, I, don't know. I, I'm I had to figure out where I was at too, cause he, he was that too aggressive. Man. What you doing? Okay, you gonna do that for me? Letting God be God. Yeah. Hey, when Dan come in like that, I mean, yeah. I've learned. Yeah, you, you might as well go ahead and do the whole, like, pull back around. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. I don't know what this is, yeah. but it's something. Hey, first off, it gave it the sweetness that I need. Whatever it is, Puffy did it a couple times. You know what? Hey, bro, what I've learned about <laughs> cognac is it got a lot of sugar. It got sugar in it, bro. And I don't like sugar, so that's why I don't like cognac anymore. Mm. I think as you get older, your palate changes. That's, that could be yeah. true. Or I guess as you get more experience and different alcohol, you, just like a different you might say this is too level of it. Because when I take the, you know what I'm saying, Johnny Walker, I say I can't go back to it. I still drink it all. I mean, we all drink it all. I look right into the camera and say that. I still drink it all. <laughs> yeah, it's a straight full. Everything. Full. <laughs> it's Everything. Ain't no uh, questions. Uh, it's in my blood. I can't help it. But I do. I understand. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. What gets me going? I feel like what really gets me going is is the ability that uh, honestly my freedom, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like what gets me going, I, I interpret that as like what makes you want to fight. You know what I'm saying? What makes you want to go conquer? It. Mm -hmm. It's my freedom. That's what motivates me, bro. I like being able to do whatever the fuck I want to do. Yeah. Go wherever I want to go. You know what I'm saying? Acquire whatever I want to acquire. Mm -hmm. And like, you know, that's why I ain't too upset about my last situation not working out. Mm -hmm. Because it was like, I, I dropped my album on my EP the same day I started to get the gig. Which I did that on purpose, mm -hmm. but I couldn't even really promote it comfortably. I couldn't even mm -hmm. feel comfortable coming to this interview with this being posted online. Because like, I'm too worried about what the next motherfucker gonna say. Yep. And it's mm -hmm. like, man, like that was the most important thing about graduating with my masters is, mm -hmm. is having my freedom. And having like the confidence to know I can do whatever it is I want to do. Mm -hmm. I can go get me a job and work a boring ass life. You know what I'm saying? Or I can, you know what I'm saying, live life, take a calculator risk. Yep. So my freedom, bro. Yeah. I'll say the same. Yeah, for I'll say the same. I'm sorry. Because I think for me, once I realized who I was, like you can't change a person after that. And you and as a person you feel like you can't go less than that. Like you might make a certain compromises, you know what I'm saying, which is the code switch you're mm -hmm. going back to. But it's like other than that, I'm doing exactly what I how I want to do things. And, when, and once you gain a certain financial bracket, of course, you are able to control more things in your life. And so, as you're saying, the freedom, you can do, you do exactly what you want to do. When you want to do it and how you want to do it. And if you don't want like that, then you don't buy. If you do, you're going to buy and, and you're going to get, you're going to reap all the benefits. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. And that's another thing too, bro. Is just focusing on the people that's gonna buy. Yeah. The people that's gonna buy into your dream, to your story, to mm -hmm. your art. You know what I'm saying? Like you can't. You, there's no way in the world that you can make music for the whole world. Nah, nah. It'll yeah. get there. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And even then, it, through different it, sources, it, like it, Dirty it, Diana. Yeah. That man, Dirty Diana. That's another way that I usher Michael Jackson. Who's Dirty Diana? Uh, NBA Young Boy made a okay, yeah. Oh, yeah. And he, he, he made a diss to Floyd Money made with a dog. Damn, they so used to mess around back. In the oh, that's on a new joint. Yeah, I did and, see and some. He ain't rocking with the song. I saw but, social media. But when they, you know, what I'm saying reference it, it even on T Genesis, he re, uh, remixed Keisha Cole's song. Oh, she she ain't like, like that. But hey, the song some hit people, right because some, like, some people some people would never listen to he performed that live. Keisha Cole. <laughs> Fifty Cent there too. <laughs> 50 Cent be on all the petty shit. Hey, I'll be mean, with it though. 50 Cent be looking for the petty shit, ready to jump in like you about to do double dutch or something. I love 50 Cent. That's how he stay alive though. First off, that's where he get his Did he move to Texas? Did he move to Dallas or Houston? Or that nigga there every he, weekend. 
don't know. I think it's that every weekend. You got business or something? Something, something. Well, you know, you, uh, I don't know. I don't want to make no accusations. Yeah, we ain't gonna speak about the man. I don't know what he do. But, you know what I'm saying? I think, uh, you know, doing yourself a favor yeah. is one of the biggest things you could ever do. That's facts. Because, yeah. I mean, essentially, what what I tell people, or what the principles are, me and Jay talked about this, you know what I'm saying, which is your affirmation. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you got your action. Mm-hmm. Then you got an accountability in that action. I like that. It's like, you know what I'm saying, triple A. Okay. So at that point, I it's think that's where you start helping yourself. You're doing you yourself. Yeah. Okay. Pull up on yourself. Pull up on yourself. Like you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. Like sometimes you need to just pull up on yourself and ask yourself, what are the what's the experience? What you doing? No, first of all, what are you doing? Are you doing? Yeah. I'm I'm too old. You feel me? Or I'm too yeah. experienced, I'm too so far into yeah. what I've been doing. Or I'm, or you I'm know not better. doing enough. You know better. Yeah, yeah. You know better. Yeah, yeah. 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 And you ain't doing enough. That's it. You're not doing enough. You know, I feel like I'm trying to find a, a balance, you know what I'm saying? Because yeah. like I feel like doing yourself a favor is that making sure you stay on your own ass about progress. But it's also doing yourself a favor and, and knowing when to celebrate yourself too. Absolutely. Knowing when to take care of yourself, knowing when to, you know what I'm saying, take a load off because Low management? Not necessarily low management, you gotta relax. You know what I'm saying? Now we're not gonna disrespect. Main you're not gonna disrespect tight for terms. <laughs> I think, but sometimes it's like, shit, if you've been working 14 days straight, I mean, you do deserve two days off. Yeah. At least. Sometimes. Don't be so hard on yourself. So, well, so like, like, cause this is what, this what it is. So when I, when I sit here and I say, take accountability, right? In whatever action. Mm-hmm. What I mean is, you will have a point in your life where you are content. And what I mean is at that moment. So at least being able to do what is necessary to main just that, which is like you said, taking that break to breathe and say like, okay, I'm cool right here. Yes, I know I want more, but right now, let me just bask in this, get this going fully, be consistent of this. And then all of a sudden you be like, okay, I'm no longer content. I gotta get back on my ass because it's time to level up. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, Hov. You can tell his points where he like, time to level up again. Mm-hmm. Time to level up again. Yeah. And then he be on his consistency. He like, all right, this, I, this all I got to do to maintain this. It's not just running perfectly. <coughs> Let me get my bread right, my family right, everybody understanding what this level feels like. <laughs> yeah, and when usually when he moving like that, is low key behind the scenes. Behind the scenes. It's low key. I'm having yeah. a meeting here and there. Like, it's like, like the world don't have no idea what he's doing because he's just kind of low key just putting things. He's moving chess pieces. You yep. know what I'm saying? Yep. Now, yep. I, I fuck with that, bro. I feel with that 100%. 100, bro. Yeah. You know, I just, just want to make sure that like we big up. You know what I'm saying? Self care. Self care. You know Self-care. what I'm saying? And make sure that we not putting entirely too much pressure on ourselves. It's, it's also not healthy. Yeah. Nigga, that that's, that's when you gotta learn how to delegate. Exactly. Though. You know what I'm saying? Oh, you just need to learn how to just to like, you know, plan accordingly. Like you said, you've been yeah. planning better. You can do all the same shit, but maybe do this now, maybe do this a little bit later. You know what mm-hmm. what but as you elevate, you feel me? You got it. You got it. You got it. You, got you, got it. Yeah, you can't you, be everywhere. As you, you used elevate, to be. once you elevate, that's when it's time to expand the team. Time to expand you know the team. Because you yeah. can't be everywhere you were you used to be. Yeah, 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 yeah. All the time. Yeah. You feel yeah. Me? Like you have to take a step back. And let other you know what I'm saying employ others to do under you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for it's, sure. It's, it's, def, it's a, everything the pyramid scheme, which people don't understand. You know what I'm saying? Every franchise is franchised. And so, how to build your structure is, you know what I'm saying? Put the work I'm in. Sorry, early. he killed that. Shut up. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I had that shit <laughs> he didn't even know what he was gonna do, but he I, felt it. And I he did. Feel, that one just came off the tip. Of you feel me? Natural delegation. Hey man. Like, man, like, it's like, if you don't learn these things on your own, yeah. life is going to put you in a position to where you have to learn it. Yep. And, like, I feel like the secret to, to life is just always being as prepared as possible. Because mm-hmm. anything, like, my boy Robbie Thomas talking that anything that can go wrong will go wrong, period. You know what I'm saying? Like, and he, and he meant that specifically in terms of, like, planning an event. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? But, like, that's also a life lesson, too. You know what I'm saying? It's like, man, you can't ever get too comfortable or too content, you know what I'm saying, too dead set on one thing to where you're just not flexible, you know what I'm saying? 
just saying, uh, five P's. Preparation prevents piss poor performance. Yeah. Woo! Okay. We got it on the 12 P's. You know what I'm saying? Got it the 12 P's? 12 P's. How do y'all call that? Piss poor preparation the most piss poor performance. Piss poor performance the most pain. Okay. Okay. So you gonna get your feelings hurt if you ain't fair. Nigga, you got a lot of time to get this shit together. That was some coke shit you just did. You know what I'm saying? You'll be like, that's why no excuses. I'm, I'm no, dead. No, no excuses, excuses bro. Say it one more time. Say it again. Say it. Uh, what? Two, no excuses? No, 12 pieces. Uh, 12 pieces. Because I'm a 5 piece. Joke. I like okay. 12 pieces. That shit did that shit. That shit did that shit. Preparation promotes piss poor performance. Piss poor performance promotes pain. You're going to be hurt if you ain't put that in. You ain't hurt. I felt that. You know what I'm saying? You ain't, you ain't put your flyer out? That shit hurt my feelings. I can't even. Yo, no, I got it. I got it. You know what I'm saying? You can't put your flyer out in time? Wow. wow. Okay. You, you ain't asking people to help. Pro- you ain't even put no money behind it. Oh, Christmas. You ain't outside Christmas. giving people your flyer? Like, this is the type of sh- You got to learn the ground game, bro. Like, that's why I love watching, like, gangster movies. Like, Blue Hill Avenue. You feel me? Hey, or watching The Godfather, yeah. learning the Bumpy Johnson move. You feel me? You gotta learn how to put that work in. Get your hands dirty. Yeah, they call me Jay Dirty for a reason. I like you, you say you listen to Charlemagne the God. What all day? Charlemagne the God has a chapter in his book, Black Privilege, called "Put the Weed in the Bag." You got and he got that from the movie Belly. Okay. But it's like you gotta learn how to put the weed in the bag first before you worry about getting the money and balling and mm-hmm. elevating. There you gotta is. put the weed in the bag first. Worth a lot. Nah, man. Cause you, how you gonna know how to what it look like? What it feel like? Nah, man. You gotta be able to have all that shit. You can't, you can't skip no experience. Man, bro. If you do, you skate it. Bro, I know. was out of the spot yesterday, bro. And uh, this man walked in to buy a sack of grass, right? Mm-hmm. And he walked in and he was like, boy, here go the money. I already communicated with you what I wanted. Here go the money. I got what I wanted. He left out. Old dude went behind him like, hey, come back. I thought you said you wanted, well, what? I owe you something, you know what I'm saying? So it's like my man that went to go buy some weed, he told the man he wanted less, you know what I'm saying, than what he actually paid for. Mm-hmm. And he about to walk out of that thing, he uh, straight, he's supposed to be able to eyeball that, cuz. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He's supposed to walk out that shit. Hey, facts. You know what facts. I'm you don't be able to get, able to see that. It's going to get over on you. Yeah. And you lucky you had a nigga that was honest. Right. <laughs> you lucky you was dealing with a real nigga. For real. So let me ask y'all a question, man. Okay. Because you know what I'm saying? Like I feel like a part of like what help held me accountable is seeing y'all niggas move so aggressively. Okay. So like what's so like 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 ideally, what do y'all want to get out of it right now? Okay. Okay. Twelve. We're going to cut to the Alright, so when I started, like I, I've always been behind the scenes. To be honest, in regards to doing work, you know what I'm saying. So I was always ABC. You know what I'm saying. I was behind the scenes. I was like, I wasn't really the face face. I was just like, all right, listen, I put in this work. I got y'all. Boom, boom, boom. Let me know what y'all need. You know what I'm saying. Jay, whenever he needed his stuff, I'm like, look. All right, you need something post cool. Like this, is what we doing? Music when y'all was doing that. All right, cool. Sure. This is what we doing. All right, like, I'm behind the but scenes. No, I just want to be in step in and be like, oh God, that's it. If not, y'all call me work. Off rip, I'm working. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I, I, that, that was it. That's always been my mentality. That work. So when I got this brand, and I thought about just in general, a lot of the excuses that you know what I'm saying people had. And at that time, working in the schools, it was like, Gene Lee, R.P. Tequila? Definitely got some tequila. Yeah. Right. Definitely got some tequila. I was hoping we had something else. You made it seem like he ain't had nothing. Mm-hmm. He did. He got, got something in the freezer. My fault, I ain't want to offer good stuff like that, but I'm like, damn, we on the show. Yeah, you know, just can't have my man. This is the art, artist. Yeah. You know, like, this DCR paradise. Let's not forget, you know what I'm saying? He helped put a lot of us in our situation. This is the Dr. Gray this shit. You okay. Good? I killed it. Right like I'm sorry, now go <laughs> no. ahead. <laughs> so, for me, that's why I did it. Because I, I had the mentality, I'm like, you know what? I want to work with these universities. 
because at that time I was in the class doing like social entrepreneurship and I'm like, you know what, this makes sense. Like this is where I can add, this is where I can help. Like I'm already known for this, I can add this and then figure out the business model and to where it'll help all, all the courts and still get a message across. Not to mention Eric Thomas. Like my mentality is just like, oh God, this makes sense. All right, well, this is my version on that. Like, you know what I mean? Like, eventually, I got to fully tell my story and come up. Yeah. So, you know what I'm saying? I was like, do yourself a favor. And I had wanted to do a clothing line, shh, probably. Yeah, for you. So lazy, years. bro. Was so lazy. So lazy, bro. Yeah. Like, I, and, and, and same principle, to be honest. What year was that? That was 12. Because I feel like I've been talking about it for years. That was, that was 12. 12. I know, I got, that I was me and That was me and That was me and Hey, look at the design. Mm. I see, I like see, I ain't never seen this. I might have seen this so lazy, Joe. Me and CC, no bullshit. That was me and CC. Mm. Shout, like, shout out CC. Shout out, like, shout that's out to the Yali. Like, hey, Yali. like, man. And then after that. Is that a Yali? Yeah, a Yali. Yali. It's all drink champ shit. I'm sorry, man. I'm drink champ. Sorry, man. I got to make up Nori again, bro. I'm sorry. I'm saying since he's a woman. That's not Yali. No, that's not Yali. It's just a general yeah. term. Okay, general term. It is a Yali. This guy. This <laughs> Quit interrupting Dan, man. Right? It's my fault. No, you got it. You got it. Or so is it innocence? Innocence. It's innocence. innocence. You know what I'm saying? Innocence. So at that point, the clothes, I was like, all right, I know how to sketch. I know how to do all this stuff. Like, I can always get the bases out. <clears throat> and then we already had a team formed, to be honest, in regards to like doing the work. Like, whatever I didn't have, I know I can figure out with the team. Like, period. Like, that's how we was able to take care of each other from since. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? From the moment we met each other. So, the hands and everything coming together was just like, all right, I got to hit people mental. Like, I want some stuff that'll be, some people going to immediately get, and then it's going to be something that's like, oh, that makes sense. That's hard. Yeah, you got to do yourself a favor. In order to get ahead, in order to do get where you want to be, you gotta start with you, yeah. and you gotta help yourself because you got plenty good about you. And you ain't gotta worry about the bad because you can out, you can outweigh that real quick. Why don't yeah. you keep helping? Why don't you yeah. keep putting on yourself? Yeah. And then the nine excuses for the generation, like Gene be saying, like, yeah, we still got society. We already talked that. Next, yeah. like, yeah, we got our circumstances. We already know that. Next. But if you want to do better and you want to get better, okay. Like, you got to help yourself. So the question is, is what you want to get out of, like, your brand? You know what I'm saying? Like, what's your aspiration? Our ultimate aspiration, I would say. Okay. How do we just live? Yeah. Okay. Or okay. one house creation. Or, shit, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, come on. I mean, for real. When I opened my first company, which was Wine House Creations and Wine House Enterprise to be, you know what I'm saying, just to start like the whole thing, I have an umbrella. But Wine House Creations was to, you know, be a media production company, you know what I'm saying, to do photography and video. However, I wasn't getting enough exposure. By that, he would, I, and I wasn't getting the support I thought I should be getting. So I, I had to realize I'm like, okay, I just can't do this by myself. Yeah. And I had to figure something that I felt so inclusive that everybody feels like they can be included in this one thing or whatever you're doing in your life. So there's no discrimination, right? And so once I figured it out with the hashtag we just live in, I was like, that's it. Because that's what you know. What I'm saying I've heard. Some of my friends say, and then I was like, you know what, I'm a hashtag that. And that's what I'm gonna do because when I, if I feel like this, there's no going back, right? And so one night, um, we were, it was me, Tay, Roy, George, we were just hanging out and I had, and it was just a regular Friday. And we, we just kept on saying it and I'm like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, you know, say I'm gonna do something with that, and then so I, you know, I made my first logo, and then so when I felt like it, I'm like, okay, I wasn't doing anything with it, and then when I realized, okay, well, I wanted an entertainment brand, that was in the corner the whole time, so when I pulled that out, it was just like, okay, what can I do with this? Because at that time, Wine House Creations wasn't doing anything, so I had, to, I had to find my next pivot, and that's how people reinvent themselves, right? 
And so I was like, what can I do? And so that's when I we talked about when I was a security guard, I was like trying to figure out my next move. And through flavors, when I was sitting on the couch at one point in time, I ain't have nothing in my house, no noodles, no nothing, drinking water and going to sleep. Because, and I had to realize, what do I bring to society at the end of the day? I always say like, what do I bring to the game? Cause I'm a, I think sports minded. I bring a little flavor. And so that's what I thought. And I, and I changed that into, you know, an art fashion show. And so through that, I was able to help people bring their passion and, you know, help inspire them to be what they want to be basically at the end of the day. But I, they have to learn that it takes accountability. You know what I'm saying? You have to have self love. Because in this game, you're going to get disappointed. You're going to, you know what I'm saying, lose friends. But you got you to gotta stay progressive. And like on, on my wall in my classroom, I had progression. Because I don't really aim for perfection. But when you aim for perfection, you, you may do anything to do whatever it takes to get there and lose your integrity. But when you aim for progression, you, you take every experience you need. So when you, you can tell someone about it, you know what I'm saying, you can teach about it. Step by step. You, you're a real, you know, student of the game. Right. And so when we just living is about you living your best life. And I started taking philosophy classes like my last couple of years and I learned anything can be your heaven. You know what I'm saying? Wherever your peace is, you, that could be going to the lake. You know what I'm saying? That could be going playing basketball. That could be you making music. That could be you uh, drawing out uh, some sketches. Whatever it is to get you at your peace of mind where you feel like this is where you're at ease. Ain't no hell right there. Perfect. That's your heaven. Nice. It's all about a mindset. And if, when you, when I realize if this is the lifestyle <clears throat> I want to live, I have to accept this about myself. Not to live to everybody else's standard. Because I grew up in the church, just like I think all of us. Mm -hmm. And then when I realize this is real life, and this is how I'm going to live my life, and I'm not doing anything to harm or, you know, omit certain things, I'm just here, because when I learn, and I don't want to be philosophical, but who's pious is pious, who's right is really right. Come on, man. It's a pissing contest after a while. Like, let's, let's just live, let's, let's figure it out. Let's just live, just figure it out. I love that, I love that, man. That's what's up, bro, that's my only question, bro. <clears throat> just wanted to see what y'all want to get out of, uh, you know what I'm saying, building y'all own brands. Cause like yeah. I said, bro, when I came back to St. Louis, and I moved in here for a little while. I literally got a chance to see you do the first flavors to the first t-shirts, to the first offset of the t-shirts with the camo and the true blue, blue Maya blue, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, you know, I got a chance to see that entire progression to the second flavors, to now, nigga, all you wear is your shit. If you going out, you got your shit on only, top to bottom. No cap, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, really got the socks, got the dress shirt. Like, it's, at this point, like, you know what I'm saying? So I got a chance to see that entire thing. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, and you just living. And it's like, oh, yo, man, where? Like, you can get it. Just let me know if you want it, but I got it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I got it. It is on me. And people fuck with that, bro. People fuck with that, that level of confidence, bro. The That's same true. thing with you, big dad. I said off camera, like, like I remember, I remember, you know what I'm saying, when you talked about wanting to do the t-shirt thing, you know what I'm saying, like the fashion thing, clothing line thing, and it's like, it's just a long time coming. You know what I'm saying? So it's like for you to, to do that shit, and it's like, and you did every single thing that you said you was gonna do. You know what I'm saying? From the, from the, from the polo button-ups, you know what I'm saying? To the motherfucking sweaters, you know what I'm saying? We waiting on the dress shirts. That's the only thing I'm waiting on. That's the only thing we waiting to see, bro. But you know what and I'm the, saying? And but but you did a ton of shit. With the, yeah, I got it. Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying? But it's just like, I know, I know that's coming though. You know what I'm saying? Because it's like that, that level of progression. You know what I'm saying? Like I see you making them small steps and you taking all your experiences and manifesting that into your own thing to speak to people. I was telling like that, do yourself a favor. That's a conversation piece, bro. Like people, like, you know what I'm saying? Either you just see the logo and you want to know what it mean, or you see the phrase and you want to know what that mean. Like, like that's what sells shit, bro. Nigga, it's this nigga's story. Like, we ain't in love with Jordan because it's the flyest shit. We love that nigga's story. You know what I'm saying? Nigga, like, 6 and 0, you know what I'm saying? 
Hey, yeah, he's a monster. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so I'm talking about two, three beats. I ain't never been That's done different. the way he been. I ain't never been done the way he did it, bro. You know what I'm saying? I mean, outside of uh, Bill Russell, you know what I'm saying? The Celtics. But that's a, I mean, but that is that is that type of nomination, right? right. It's right. like it's like right. he, he among the first five six niggas in the league, and he the, and he the biggest, strongest, quickest, baddest of all of them. That he's that type of domination. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That was I'm my, coming back. And I'm when, coming back beats man. Yeah. So <laughs> so Jordan, <laughs> you make it so Jordan was that type of domination, bro. When he took sports branding to a whole different level. That's you know it, what I'm that's saying? It. But that's why we love him. Story because yeah. it's a story. Man, so transform. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah. Hey, uh, man, bro. He's the real goat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nah, man, shout out to AI, bro, because you know what I'm saying? He is, bro. He's he got a whole story. He, he came back and taking over. He's the king of my kings, bro. He gave the 76 days swag back. Okay. Touche. <laughs> Touche. Man, I got niggas like Joel and B giving him swag. That's, <laughs> that's my nigga, bro. Hey, like, hey, hey, yo, be great. Let him be great. Yeah, that niggas laugh. Trust? Yeah, that's my dude, bro. I love him. I love him. I love all of them. I believe Ben Simmons shoot the ball like Hey, man, man. Kyrie is coming. Boy, we ain't we ain't finna make this about no Philly podcast. We ain't around with niggas <laughs> like that, bro. You, you just ride with LeBron. And I be riding with LeBron. I'm not even a Lakers fan. I mean, bro, you ain't got to ride with him. I mean, shit, you don't, you do not, you can Cuba Gooden Jr. Get out the motherfucking car if it's ain't for you, dog. But I, but I want LeBron to win. We will let you out and I, yeah, I want LeBron to win, though. All right, but he already winning. He yeah, I want him to win it. I want him to win it. We gonna, I know, he, I, I want him to win. He got to win this shit in I want, LA. I want him to, he going to do that. Yeah, don't worry about it. He got to do it this year. Yeah, I know who I'm riding with, so I'm doing it. The Celtics, they shit, period. They shut up, bro. You work with Don't be disrespectful. You rock they not gonna do it, bro. They not gonna get out of the race, bro. Right. Not, I guess are, are, are Have you not, seen Giannis? Have you seen us? Hey, Giannis is uh, walking 30 and 13. And we still a chill. <laughs> Giannis is a, and we still a and they got the and they got the best record in the league. You call him a chinchilla? They got the best record in the league. You call him a They got the best record in the league. But they, you call him a chinchilla? He's a walking thirty and thirteen. Who gon' who gon' go? That man's expensive. We never talking about right now. We never we talking about nobody in the East, nigga. We talking about the Lakers only, bro. They ain't. Because when LeBron, we LeBron just got it, bro. I don't know what, what it is. Do? LeBron just got it. He he overthink everything, bro. You gotta say that shit for outside the court, bro. You just gotta play basketball, bro. But, but he, but, never, he hey. but, see, but but that's my thing. That's what I was saying earlier, bro. The pressure is so self inflicted. Yeah. That's why we gotta know. Like, I mean, honestly, every day is a work day for us. Yes. Like, honestly, every, every day. day is a work day for us, bro. I've heard the work, and that's why that's why we smoke the weed. Because when we smoke the weed, that's our little bit of peace. That's our little bit of heaven. That's our little bit of paradise, if I will. If you will. You know what I'm saying? That's our little bit of paradise, bro, just to kind of get us over the edge, allow us to relax, because we're not going to, we don't, we don't, we don't never stop working. We playing with the babies, we playing with the nephews, you know what I'm saying? We having that time at the crib and Decatur, you know what I'm saying, with the family, but you still think about your work, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, that's what LeBron be on, bro. He be thinking about too much shit on the court. You got to take that shit off the court and just play ball, nigga. You got the best team in the league, bro. You know what I'm saying? Ain't nobody fucking with y'all, bro. Nobody's fucking with y'all. Man, you know what I'm saying? did you see his first half? He didn't. He nigga had 10 turnovers. This nigga came from, bro, you're not going to win if you're the best player in the league. He be just overthinking. Like, bro, you got 7 ball. to 10 turnovers a game, bro. You're not going to win, bro. That's enough to. But he think he got a score. Turn, all the turnovers led to points, bro. He think he got a score. Like, he's, he so, think he got a score. He's not going to hang out a score 30, bro. And Dan, I know people like Dan would love nothing but to see him fail. Yeah. yeah. It's not about that, bro. It's what just is the it fact about that? What I is it about? I don't know that myself just gonna do it. Do what? They gonna do what? Gonna who gonna do who? Okay, say they beat everybody in the East. Yeah. Who they gonna beat in the West? Bro, Paul Perry was done for 13 years and they ain't win nothing. Bro, we good. Who they gonna beat in the West? Everybody. Who they gonna beat in the East? Do you, do you see the East? Who gonna stop Giannis? We are good. We are good. We are great. Who's gonna stop Giannis? Our you team know, work is solid. solid. You do not sound sure. And I fuck with Jason Taylor. Like our team. Y'all teamwork ain't going to stay. Right. Hey. Y'all not going to stay. We killed. Kill, when you talk about right teamwork, now, teamwork. Yeah, people didn't even think we'd be right where we at right now. Where is your head? What? You're number three, these? Solid. 
Hey, solid I'm, right but now. the thing is, teamwork. Solid. Hey, teamwork is a new standard. Bro, at that point, niggas is talking about Miami, bro. Hey, niggas is talking about Miami, bro. I ain't going to hold you. We're not coasting stage, niggas. Turn up the gear. Niggas talking about Miami. But you know what? Teamwork is a new standard of Golden State, though. In real life, go to state. What do you think about? We ain't even talking about going to state. Don't even use them as no reference. Mm-hmm. Let's think about them. The, the first without Kevin. You feel me? Said without Kevin. The first round. Yeah. Without Kevin. Said uh. The first man. It was the first two. Come on, come on, man, Kevin. Exclude that. That moment. He got the man, Kevin. Alright, he said exclude that moment. <laughs> like in history. You know, I just take that off. Because we ain't gonna count that. He got the man, Kevin. Alright. <laughs> you know personal. That's that was personal. Not <laughs> Snipe, not KD. No, he said Kevin. He said I definitely know this guy. Hey, exclude though. I keep looking for my Hey, they had hey they passed <laughs> they passed the rock. They made sure that thing went around that whole defense and everything. Everybody touched the ball. You feel me? And they could score. Yeah. Like so your team, when you think about teamwork, everybody has to play their position. Yeah. And once you play your position, like in football, one person play it, don't play their position, they get burned. Next thing you know, you have a great big spot open. That's why Tom Brady's so good. It's people to get open. So you got to play your position. So how important to you is in your life you, that, you know what I'm saying, that teamwork is? How important teamwork is to you? Like I said, bro, I alluded to it earlier, bro. 2019 taught me that I don't have to do it all by myself. So like if you listen to my EP, uh, on the first track is a lot of my composition, but then you know I, I had made J eighty eight come down the back end and really beef it up, mm-hmm. and then the rest of the tracks from then on out is really Chino taking my composition, yeah. composing it, arranging it, and, and really producing the tracks that will you know what I'm saying that will provide the soundtrack to my story basically. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? The major moves is a track that mm-hmm. that uh, AI. Yeah, mm-hmm. Yeah, I actually when I came when I right when I came back from Georgia, I was living with Jay. Chino was actually still living in Georgia and he cooked it up and he sent it to me. So that's actually really y'all uh, Chino. You know what I'm saying? The waves we actually made that together in St. Louis before we moved to Georgia. Uh so I mean it's like a, it's like bro, it's really like a man, it's really like a, a snapshot of where I am in my life, especially over the last three or four years. So I'm really proud of that project, and um, and I couldn't have made it happen without the team, bro. Yeah. So it's like I, I, I uh, made JDA. You put me in contact with him. And we was working together, and they ended up in a really good relationship. He put me into with St. Louis hits, but really, you know, mix and master, have it sound right. And um, like I said, Chitter really provide, provided the backbone for it. So. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, what did your music mean? Like, what is the album, the project you put out? DCR Paradise City. You know, I couldn't choose one name, so I had to use them all. <laughs> and you got niggas like NBA Young Boy and all kind of shit, bro. So it's like, man, just be yourself, bro. And you call me DCR. That's what I go by. Uh, you can call me Paradise, Paradise City. And really, it's just all about me. You know what I mean? So I grew up different, bro. In 2018, 2019, really helped give me the confidence to celebrate and appreciate my differentness. You know what I'm saying? If that's a, you know, if I can make it my own word, my differences, you know what I'm saying? I like, give it to you. I mean, you know what I mean? Ain't nobody gonna hold it. It might be free. It might be free. So that's hard. Right. I like how you did that, bro. Okay. So, like, you know, like, I was raised different. My mama raised me up different. You know, she raised me in the church, obviously, but it really kept me sheltered. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, you know, I had an opportunity to just kind of explore and be myself. You know what I'm saying? I kind of learned what I like really. You know what I mean? I know I like, you know what I'm saying, women. You know what I'm saying? I know I like. I, I, did too. I know I like weed. Quick. You know what I'm saying? Quick. I know Quick. I like money. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and I know I like. You know what I'm saying? Just like you know, I like oh, helping right. people, bro. I help like you know what I'm saying. I like like watching people evolve and grow and do different and new things. Oh, so like you know, I feel like Thank I can't really do that for nobody else until I did it for myself. Mm-hmm. And that's what my EP is a reflection of of, of that journey. You know what I'm saying? I've been through a lot, bro. You know what I'm saying? In terms of just like. Trying to learn shit, you know what I'm saying? I don't feel like I had no hard life. You know what I mean? I feel like I had to work for everything I got, but I don't feel like my life is as hard as a lot of people out there. Mm-hmm. So I have a lot of empathy for people, you know what I'm saying? But at the same time, I gotta elevate myself before I can help elevate others. And that's what my EP is, bro. Straight up and down. No other way? No other way, bro. The only way, 227. Blessed be. The most high? The most high, bro. Yeah. 
man. So that's it, man. Yeah, yeah. Anything wrong with this? It's, 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 it's talking about it's about a rap to me. Yeah, it might be a rap. You feel me? So you every know. clip, we just want more sauce, more and more bait. Facts. Wait, that's what that do to you. That's what that hey. do. <laughs> so, hey, hey, oh, hey, yeah. hey, what you mean? Hey, introduce your album. You good? Hey, man, it's my time to talk about me and my swag, bro. My name's DCR, Paradise City. All three different words. You feel me? You can find me anywhere. We're going to have the links on this joint. So make sure you click that for easy access. Appreciate y'all, man. More coming soon. Revolutionary Dreams, too. All that jazz. And you know that, don't you? <laughs> you got it. He got it. He got it. He got it. That's polish. Uh, Whoop. we make it major moves. We make it major. Right or wrong, gonna be. Yep. Paradise City just hop on it. We make it major moves. <laughs>